I shall try to explain how Belgium organizes its relation between state and religion and why we ask for a real separation between state and religion. Historically, Belgium is a Catholic country in the sense that most of the population were Catholics. There were also some Jewish and Protestant people, so Belgium recognized three religions after its creation in 1830. But when I say recognized, I mean also that Belgium subsidized three religion communities. And what about today? Today, Belgium recognized and subsidized eight religious communities. The Catholic, Protestant, Jewish, Anglican, Islamic, Orthodox, the Buddhist community, and the so-called non-confessional secularists. All these persuasions are taught in state-run schools over the whole curriculum, 12 years, in separate class classes, two hours a week. That means that Catholic pupils are together to learn the foundations of Catholicism, and the same goes for, for Muslims, Jews, etc. We created the Rappel in 2007 because we wanted, and still want, our state to be secular. That means totally free from religious influence in accordance with the US constitutional principle that no religion can be established, which guarantees freedom of conscience for all. This implies that no religious or non-confessional community be financed by the state. Like the 1905 French law on the separation of the church and the state, the Republic ne neither recognizes nor salaries nor subsidizes any religion. Why might the state recognize one or more religions? If it does, it necessarily favors one of four or more religions and disfavors all others. Moreover, it considers that citizens are not only citizens but also members of a religious community, and in so doing, it weakens the civic community. The danger is that the law ceases to be the same for all citizens and becomes different depending on a person's creed. In Belgium, we are already confronted with many examples of such a tendency. Teachers must be neutral, not show their pref preference for a political or religious system unless they teach religion. Animals must be stunned before being slaughtered, unless there are religious reasons to refuse this. A very old rule says that people cannot walk around the street with a mask, except during carnival time. But a few weeks ago, a court decided that it was disproportionate to forbid a woman to walk around the street with a full Islamic veil. A few years ago, a member of parliament was expelled from the, the, assembly, the assembly room, sorry, because he was wearing a t-shirt and a cap reading another world is possible. It was considered a wrong dress in such a place. A few years later, the Brussels Parliament welcomed the very first member of the Parliament in Europe who wore an Islamic veil. Many, especially left-wing people, considered this a progress. But would they rejoice in the same way if a sultan wearing priest were to be elected? More and more, the idea that religious obligations and prohibitions are more respectable than personal choices gains terrain. And many intellectuals and politicians declare their interest in introducing reasonable accommodations in Belgium law. A few months ago, a commission of experts presented a report about interculturality in Belgium. In its very first lines, it stated that democratic principles such as equality between all citizens, equality between men and women, and the struggle against racism are not absolute values sorry, and must be balanced against other principles. The rest of the text confirms the will of the others. In the, uh, under the pretext of fighting racism and discrimination, they suggest to introduce quotas of people from minorities in the working world, to allow public officials to wear religious signs unless they work for the army, police, or the justice. To allow pupils to wear religious signs in the last years of secondary education. To consider introducing reasonable accommodations in Belgian law. To change the calendar of public holidays to allow workers to choose two days off according to their religious convictions. 
All these examples show that Belgium hesitates to introduce the principle of secularism in her constitution and seems to favor communitarianism. We at the Rappel are convinced that living together with people of different religious convictions requires a clear separation between politics and religion, between law and faith. In this task, we must fight against two tendencies. Some liberals tend to consider that the fight against religious claims in politics was and remains legitimate if these claims come from Catholic Church, but that Islamic claims must be treated differently because Islam is the religion of the poor who are already discriminated by xenophobia. On the other hand, the other hand some conservatives with no intention to secularize the, the Belgian state tend to consider that Belgium must defend her Christian tradition and that foreign religious must adapt. We refuse both inappropriate compassion and discrimination. Our point is it's clear. The law must be the same for all citizens. Religion can neither be a privilege nor a handicap. And the only way to reach this goal is to consider people equal citizens with equal rights and equal duties by promoting what unites, not what divides. Thank you for your, for your attention. Yes, excuse me. Um, well, uh, contrary to what has been said previously, um, uh, I would say that um, secularism has no particular link to feminism. It has a link, of course, both are linked, but um, in, in, a, in the more broad sense that uh, secularism generally refuses to see people as members of a group, but it sees citizens as individuals. So no subgroups are recognized in society. That's what, to me, secularism is all about. You're a citizen. You're not a Catholic as part of the Catholic group in society. You're not a Jew as part of the Jewish group in society. Um, so secularism to me is more seeing people as individuals. Uh, and of course, it implies seeing people as individuals, so not particularly as a woman as part of the women's group in society or a man as part of the men's group in society. And in that sense, it has something to do with feminism, but not more with feminism than with other uh, issues on, on subgroups in society. What Nadia said was in French, we have two words for secularism actually. We have secularism on the one hand and laïcité, which is the French word, um, I mean, from the French state, uh, on the other hand. And laïcité describes a situation where um, religion or faith, uh, personal beliefs, and uh, the institutional sphere are clearly separated, whereas uh, the French word for secularism described a more personal situation, so we can say that a society is secularized if religion loses influence in that society, whereas laïcité would more describe the relationship between uh, the state uh, and the personal beliefs of its citizens. And uh, I think there was something else. No, there was... Oh yes, so you could say, for instance, well, the example was Turkey, which is not to our, or in the French meaning of the words, uh, a, a secularized society because belief, religious belief, is still very important in Turkish society. Um, yet you could say that the uh, the Turkish state is laicized in that you know the the the, the separation between uh, faith and the state is official. Um, so, and and that's true for the United States as well.